Hi, this is Vicki Gilford Cornell. I have come to share another dream with you. I had this dream today, 9-23-24. I started journaling it at 6-24 a.m. This is entitled, The Art Class Dream. Before we start, I ask that you take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try, test it. Study this out. Study it out. Learn what your what the Word of God says. It says to try, test the spirits. First John four one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. First Thessalonians five twenty one. Prove all things. Hold fast. Hold fast to what you know. And if you have been told wrong about this or never taught this, then it's just possible other things you have been told are not shown is in the Word of God. And you've been taught incorrectly or never taught at all. I'm finding that out for myself as well. So I get, I'm get i getting in the Word of God myself and asking Holy Spirit to lead me. Teach me as it says in Proverbs 14, 26 and 1 John 2, 27 He will do. I ask Jesus Christ to teach me through Holy Spirit standing on John 14, 14. John 14, 26 1 John 2, 27. Please pray about this. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. I'm dropping my shoes. I apologize. I'm making a lot of noise. I, I, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> they're, they're a little big. I've lost weight. And my shoes are big on me now. But they're comfortable. It is what it is. <laughs> sorry. Lord, have your way. Sweet Holy Spirit. Take this wherever it needs to go. Don't let me speak a word or read a word or say a word. Anything that's not from Jesus Christ or Father God. Even in my own talking, in the name of Jesus Christ, let me be led by you. I surrender to you, to your full will. Because you are the spirit of truth, it says in John. And you will only lead me to Jesus Christ, who is the truth. John fourteen six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ, I ask that you answer this prayer. Now I ask this be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. You are the invisible God that makes things visible and makes visible invisible. You are amazing, God. Father God, you are amazing, and I love you. So I ask this be placed and hidden under the shadow of your wings, according to Psalms 91-1, Lord. 91-2, 91, just Psalms 91, the whole thing is good. I thank you for how much you love us. I've been studying on the wrath of God, and I've been studying on why it says we're not appointed under wrath. So many knows how to say that verse, but they don't know the real reason behind it. Open up your word to us, Ephesians 1, 17-19. I pray over me, myself, Father God, this ministry, my family, but also on anybody pertaining to this ministry, my brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, who's willing to be taught and to seek the truth, your truth, your truth, not my truth, your truth, Jesus Christ. And as I share these things, it is up to every person to try, test, discern according to the word of God and then follow what you, Jesus Christ, or Father God says. You know, growing up, Lord Jesus Christ, you gave me a mother that told me, take no man's word. Go to the word of God, not even hers, because she's human. She can fail, and that's where we're at. We're all human. None of us are perfect, but we're all striving to keep ourselves holy and pure and obedient living to this word. And as we come across things, if they're wrong in our life, and we trust the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to reveal the truth. But if we're so stubborn and preset in our ways that we're not ways that we're not willing to, to learn the truth, he's going to let us stay there too after he keeps trying for a while. Help me to always be pliable like clay in the potter's hands, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Keep me humble at all cost. I want to be a servant. I don't want to be ministered to. I want to be a servant. Now, Lord, every gizmo, gadget, device, weapon, psyop, every form of attack that you know of in all your knowledge they could possibly do in all your existence past present future in all i cancel break reverse nullify disable and all effects are nullified and i send everything back standing on proverbs 26 2 
in addition to all the times that David prayed for the the enemies to be caught in their own net. This is all showing these things can be done. It's not that we're sending curses. You do turn the other cheek, but there's, there comes a moment in time when you're done turning the other cheek. Jesus Christ, you turned the other cheek while you came on this earth the first time. But when you come back, you will not be turning the other cheek. There comes a done moment in time when you're done turning the other cheek. So help us to understand when that is, Lord, so that we do not go off into sin. Now, Lord, I stand on this. This word of God in all things and according to Acts 5 if this ministry is not from you if this is just me which I have no desire to be known I have no desire for glory but if it's not from me it will fall and I ask you to take it down but if it's from you let it rise father and let it reach all you need it to read for your glory for your glory and I ask this to be done in Jesus Christ's name so that he will be glorified and you will be glorified in all that is done. It's all about you, Jesus Christ and Father God. It's not about me. It's not about this ministry. It's not about my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. It's all about you and reaching the lost. And if we ever lose sight of that, we become useless. Help us, Lord to be what you've called us to be. Give us ears to hear your truth, eyes to see and look beyond the facade and the illusions and the delusions. I tear all them down, the lying and the, the webs and all such type things. I tear them down standing on 2 Corinthians 10, 14. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through his son Jesus Christ to the pulling down of strongholds. I pull down every stronghold, erected or being erected, any stronghold being formed to form an attack. I tear them all down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ with no retaliation, backlash, interference, spying, or such like for anything prayed on this video or that I've done this day, this night, in Jesus Christ's name, ever. In all your knowledge and all your existence, Father God, because you know what they will try to do. Close up and seal up all loopholes, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your will be done in all things. In all things. Every trap trigger will be trapped or such like that's been sin against me. For when I turn on this laptop, when I start to do your work, I hereby cancel them. Seal them in the blood of Jesus Christ, and if any needs to be set off to, to go forward, let them be done where they do not hinder or hurt anybody. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I give you praise. He is a good, good God. Hallelujah. All right, this dream is called the Art Class Dream. I saw some people in this dream. One was a lady I know, but I'm only given the first names. You seek Jesus Christ for that. Father God, I dreamed again last night, two different dreams. The first I had returned to school, but I was my current age. I was in an art class, but so was Teresa, a woman I knew, and others. The others, except for me and two other people, were all sitting at a round table that was very low to the floor. It looked like a kindergarten's table and chairs, which is real low to the floor. The teacher, a young woman, was drawing, um, teaching how to draw on a large easel that was sitting in front of of the round table where Teresa, Paula, Stanley, Stephen, Joyce, and Benny were sitting. The other two people be, um, besides me were sitting at higher at a higher table behind the easel. So it was like this. You have the table, you have the easel, and then the two other people were back this way. There's another little table over here. Um, but they could not see. The two people behind could not see what the teacher was drawing and teaching teaching us. When I had first entered the room, 
I had been sitting near them, but once the teacher had begun to teach, I had moved over to the long high table behind the others at the low round kindergarten-like table. The teacher drew an example of a half ball in the corner of the paper and on the easel, and we were to copy her drawing where we were to duplicate it the best we could. It looked like it was sitting inside a high ridge bowl, and we were to draw it. She was showing the shadowing techniques. She did a quick drawing, but I only saw it for a moment because I chose to move as I could see, couldn't see from the other side of the room to the, from one side of the room to the other. I'm sorry. But I did see the picture. I began to draw my picture as well as the others, minus the two who couldn't see what the teacher had drawn. Then suddenly she flipped the page, leaving me only the one good look at what to draw and to remember the shadowing stroke techniques. Groans, were <laughs> Groans went out from those at the small table because they didn't have anything to look at anymore. Even though they had a longer time to look at the teacher's copy, longer than the time I had seen it. Now, I don't normally show this, just to give you an example. It was just a, like a ball and then a, a table in the corner, in the right corner. And it was shadowing. And you see where I go back over dark, if I, in my haste to write, I correct myself. Okay, I begin to draw my picture as well as the other minus the two who couldn't see what the teacher had drawn. Then suddenly she flipped the page from leaving me only the one good look at what I what to draw and to remember the shadowing, shadowing stroke techniques. Groans went out from those at the small table because they didn't have anything to look at anymore, even though they had a longer time to look at the teacher's copy longer than the time I had seen it. Sorry about duplicating. I looked at the now blank canvas, but continued to draw by memory. The teacher passed by the students at the round small table as if a teacher checking the progress of her students taking a test and to ensure they are doing their work. She didn't stop, but did look down at all their work. Those at the table seemed to squirm, not liking their work being examined. I was working quickly on the picture of my own, trying to get it drawn as close as it, excuse me, as close as the original as I could from the brief time I had seen it. Suddenly, the teacher was standing in front of me. I looked up into her young face and said, I only got a glimpse of the picture before the canvas page was removed from our site but I'm still trying to draw it the best of my, of my memory. Then she did something unexpected. She touched my right hand from where I had been holding the pencil to get my full attention. I looked up and she said in a low voice, it was only low enough for me and her to hear, you're doing fine. You've got this. It is an accurate interpretation of the example I gave you. Complete your work. You're ready to graduate. My mouth hung open as my heart filled with so much joy. She turned around without saying another word, then walked over to the easel. She flipped the easel paper back again to the picture she had drawn. Then she spoke to her class, including me. This is what I have shown you and given you as an example. Please come forth and bring your drawings with you as I call you up front. Then you will show your picture to the rest of the class, holding it next to the original. We will begin with the round table. Paula, bring your picture and let's see how well you've learned what I have taught and how well you followed the instructions you were given. Excuse me. Thank you, sweet Lord. The woman, Paula seemed almost giddy with joy that she had been chosen first to present her picture to the rest of us. She got up quickly, actually surprisingly easy for an adult sitting at a kindergarten table. 
She, <laughs> she walked the short distance, almost skipping. The teacher's face is emotionless. Paula stands next to the canvas and looks at the teacher who gave her a nod of her head to proceed. With a huge smile on her face, she turned her picture around. The drawing is far from correct. The half ball that's on the teacher's picture and is down in the right corner with the edge of the bowl almost forming a half circle around it at an angle. On Paula's picture, it looked like she had begun drawing the half circle, the half ball, in the corner with the bowl, but sometimes she had decided to erase it and moved the circle to the center of the page. So she started out with the ball, the half circle in the right corner and, and moved it. You could see traces of residue where she had originally started her drawing in the correct position. So you have the residue of the erased original ball and the other one, which she drew as a full round ball with a circle around it representing the bowl. There wasn't any ridges to the bowl edge either. Paula held her picture with great pride. Okay. There's her residue where she started and erased it. There's where she put her. It's important. That's why I'm showing. I meant to draw pictures, but the Lord said he wanted it just to go ahead and not to dry draw. Because when I start drawing, I draw a lot. <laughs> the teacher, though young, was strict. Tell me, why did you deviate from the original example? Why did you not follow my example given to you? It didn't please, didn't phase her these questions at all from the teacher. She said quickly, All of our pictures would be the same if we stuck strictly to our example. This way, there's diversity. I like diversity, Paula said quickly. The young lady teacher said in a stern voice, You might like diversity and change, but you were instructed to draw a picture of the example you were shown to the best of your ability. Instead, you have chosen not to follow the instructions I have given you, choosing to adapt your picture to your own preferences. You have failed this class. Now sit down. Her mouth flew open in shock, followed by tears that changed almost immediately into defiance. Fine, she almost shouted, then stomped the short way to her seat at the kindergarten table. Next, she called Teresa, the lady I knew, up to present her picture. She walked to the front after showing some difficulty getting up from the short, small chair and tables made for kindergarten children. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> She walks forward, holding her picture to her chest. She is very serious and businesslike. The teacher seemed unimpressed. Teresa, please show your picture to the others, and we will discuss it. Yes, teacher, she said. She turned her picture over, and it's actually quite good, except it's in the wrong corner. It's drawn in the left side and not the right. Her picture looks almost like a duplicate, but it's wrong. Teresa, why did you draw the picture on the opposite side? Why the left side and not the right one? Her picture's the opposite. Teresa answered in an almost sly sounding voice. Is it not a correct rendition of what you have drawn? Is not the ball in the corner and shadowed in the same technique as you used? Even the ridges are seen on the bowl's edges, she said with a smile. The young teacher is wise. She looked at Teresa's drawing and then pointed to the original she had given us as an example. Then she spoke. Yes, your shadowing is correct in its techniques. And yes, you have the edges of the bowl correct also. You even have your proportions correct, but it is still flawed. It's a fake, a false duplicate, 
because despite all the correct things you have done, you have still drawn it on the wrong side of the page, which you have deliberately done. No matter how close you co your copy is, if it is not made by the instructions and examples given to you, then it is still wrong. You have chosen not to follow my instructions given to you. Each of you were given the same instructions to follow. You were to draw a picture of the example I made for you using the same techniques. You were each shown. This was not a lesson for you to draw your own interpretations of what you were given to draw. Your pictures, the, excuse me, for your own interpretations of what you were given to draw your pictures from, but to draw it and keep it as close as the original, the original one I made for you. Teresa, sit down. You failed. I'm watching stunned by all I'm seeing as a teacher called the remaining four people at the small kindergarten table, which were three men and one more woman. Each picture they had drawn was wrong. One man even colored his picture with colored pencils when it was supposed to be a black and white drawing, a sketch. Next, the teacher called me to the front. I walked slowly to the front near the easel. Although the young teacher had given me earlier those words of encouragement, my drawing is now going to be scrutinized by the rest of the class, as well as the teacher, now that my picture has been fully completed. I stood by the easel, then turned my art pad over with my face, looking at the floor. I heard low murmurings from the small kindergarten table full of people that caused me to, um, the table full of the people that caused me to raise my head and look at them. The young teacher walked over to me and took my picture and held it next to the one she had drawn on the large easel. The large easel, sorry. This is how you follow instructions, she said out loud. Though my picture is not 100% accurate, it is a close representation, I now see, as she held it next to the original. The two people that had been sitting on the other side of the room, who originally hadn't been able to see, walked over to take a good look. They had been watching and observing all that had occurred since the beginning of the class. Now they are looking closely at the two pictures side by side. It is a man and a woman. The woman said to the man, I stand corrected. It is possible for someone to follow the rules and instructions and come away with a correct rendition of the original. Then suddenly the classroom disappeared with only the easel, the teacher, and the teacher holding my picture still attached to the art pad and myself. The young lady teacher changed into a shadowy figure of a man. He began speaking, Daughter of Zion, I have been sent to this world to reside in the risen Lamb, Jesus of Christ, children. I will comfort you. Thank you, Lord. Lead you and teach you if you will let me. But you must follow my instructions. I am the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, the Anointing, the Holy Spirit, and so much more. It was through your determination to follow the instructions given to you, to the whole class, that you were able to draw the picture correctly, as I brought it to your memory, each detail of the original drawing. The same it is with the Holy Word of God. The Christian's life is one of obedience. If you allow me to lead, you, lead your steps and you walk those steps obediently, I will help you walk through your life safely all the way to your final destination of heaven with the great God and Holy Father of all, Jehovah God, and His Son, Jesus Christ, the risen Lamb, who died for all so you could go free of sin, sin's bondages. I will instruct you, correct you, convict you, comfort you, and love you. I am the same Spirit that resided in Jesus Christ while He walked the earth as God and man. Daughter of Zion, this drawing on this easel is an example 
a representation symbolic of the Word of God given to your world. The written copy, those at the kindergarten table, represents the many who claim to serve the Holy Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who have now given their own interpret excuse me, own interpretation to the world, now shared due to their own disobedience to obeying the instructions found inside its pages. Twisting it to appear pleasing to the eye, but still wrong. They have corrupted the interpretation of the Holy Scripture and have presented it to the world in this form. Some, like the drawing from the Paula woman in your, in, excuse me, started out right, but then changed and moved from the truth of what's written in the Holy Word of God. That is why in her drawing you could see where she had started her drawing in the correct right corner, but then erased it, then drawing her picture where she chose for it to be drawn. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. The picture by Teresa, as you noticed, was a duplicate of the picture, but drawn in the wrong corner, which caused the picture to be drawn in reverse. This is those in the churches who know the word of God, but in reality are from the enemy who have infiltrated the Lamb's churches. These are the fallen angels. No matter how accurately they present the gospel, it will always be wrong from them because they are totally evil. Upon closer scrutiny by someone who lets me, Holy Spirit, lead their way, they will soon realize the picture presented to them is not quite right. That's discernment. Something is off. It's because it is a fake, duplicate gospel they are preaching and teaching. So close to the truth that many have been seduced by their words. These infiltrators can also be Nephilim and human agents and will turn and sway the Lamb's children through subtle deceptions and bits and pieces of compromise. Your drawing in this class is a representation of those children of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who have made a decision to follow the rules, the instructions given to them, which is the blessed Holy Word of God, given to your world out of love from the great Father God in heaven for his beloved creation, mankind. It is out of this great love I have been sent here, your performance in the class is symbolic of those children who will not compromise, but will strive to follow the instructions no matter how hard it seems, but also by relying on me, such as you did when you chose to continue to draw the picture as instructed even when the original was taken out of sight. You drew on your memory, which was actually me bringing it up before you once again such as I do for all the Lamb's children when they ask. This is how you were able to continue to draw from memory the picture and make an almost perfect, almost correct picture. The two people, the man and the woman in the class alone, represented the world watching. This is also why you moved from their side of the room to the lone higher table you sat at to draw your picture and to be able to see what the young lady teacher was drawing. You are not of this world. The higher table you sat at in the classroom, different from the lower kindergarten table the crowd sat at, represents your higher standards of not compromising or of having to be a part of others. Again, you are representing those of the risen Lamb's children who have become separated from the religious Christians of the world who have lowered their standards and compromised their beliefs. These at the kindergarten table, if they do not repent, minus the Teresa type of those who are not savable, they shall end up in hell's fire, then into the lake of fire for their apostasy. There is much, much blood on their hands. 
Then sweet Holy Spirit looked at me in his shadowy form and said, Daughter of Zion, class is dismissed. And then I woke. Whew. The Holy Spirit will love me. Hallelujah. Please pray about this. Here are the verses. John 14, 26. 1 John 2, 27. Jude, verse 4, 8 through 13. One chapter in Jude. For those new Christians. Matthew 5, 14. Galatians 2, 4. 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 3, 2 through 3. And verse 17. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Excuse me. John 14, 15. Luke eleven twenty eight, 28. Acts 5, 29. Matthew 7, 13 through 29. Psalms 119, 1. John 14, 21. James 1, 27. John 8, 31 through 32. And that was 2 Peter 2, meaning the whole chapter. Please pray about this. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Test it. Try it as we're called to do. I was like, I woke up and I was like, wow. I just, to be honest, and I love to draw. So it was really. Thank you, Jesus. He puts things in a way you can understand. And that's something I usually understood. Having to learn the shadowing techniques and all that before. But take it and try and test it. I still try and test it. Even though, you know, just from all appearances, hey, that sounds like it's from God. Try and test it. Test everything. I'm going to speak for a moment. Just for a short moment. Lord, do you want me to go ahead and do that? So many of us we're so quick to say we're not appointed under wrath and leave it at that. We're supposed to give an answer for this blessed hope. Those of us that believe we're not appointed under wrath and that we're out of here. Well, those of you, depending on your calling, you're out of here. The bride is out of here before the wrath hits. Do you know why? Why are you spared that wrath? You need to be able to give a, a reason. So I want to take a little trip through Scripture. I've actually been doing some studies. I've had a lot of people over the course send questions in even before the email was taken down about revelations and stuff. And I'm actually answering those. Meaning I'm preparing to present it. Praying and seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. When you understand... The very doctrine of Jesus Christ. He came to this world to become sin. To take our place so we could be forgiven. We who are in Christ. We are in Christ. When you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. His blood covers and washes you clean. And that debt of sin is marked paid. You are redeemed. He is the propitiation for our sin. Propitiation. The act of appeasing a God, spirit, or person. Atonement especially from Jesus Christ. That's just the, the Webster Dictionary. The There's not even going to the biblical. Appeasing a God. The wrath of God because he is long-suffering. He is just. He is merciful. He says he's storing a breath. So when Jesus Christ was on the cross, he became sin. He became the atonement, the perfect sacrifice. All right, I'm going to see where I find it. If you could understand that the body of Christ, those who've accepted Jesus Christ truly, is justified by Christ's blood, so we will not, cannot, according to, to the word of God, accept, be, have that wrath fall upon us unless we turn away. I will read a few verses. Because, well, I want to go to 1 Thessalonians first. When the Lord took me to this verse, and yes, I asked sweet Holy Spirit, so okay, I know, but I've never pulled all the scriptures together. 
1 Thessalonians 1, 9 through 10. Oops, I'm in Timothy. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. These are Christians. 10. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Some people say that's just because when you get saved, you're delivered, don't have to go to hell. There's a difference between being sent to your eternal punishment or your choice of where you go and being delivered from wrath. Because wrath is appointed to those in sin. So uh, here it says, Jesus which, which delivered us. He delivered us from the wrath to come. His sacrifice delivered us from the wrath to come. Jesus Christ became sin. And God's wrath was poured out upon the cross. He became sin. It's found in 2 Corinthians 5.21. Here you, Lord. He said to go ahead and read that. We got Thessalonians. Anybody taking notes? Second Corinthians five twenty one. <laughs> I tell you what, when you pray and you cry and your Bible will pay you to stick together sometimes. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> five twenty one. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Jesus became sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We become accepted because of what Jesus Christ did. Galatians 3.23 tells us that he broke the curse. Holy Spirit lead me in Jesus Christ's name. But before faith came, we were kept under... No, that's the wrong one. 3.13. 3.13. Sorry, 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, the curse of sin, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He became sin. He became the curse. And then when he conquered it all, he made a way for us to be delivered from the wrath. 1 John 4. He just wanted me to read some of these scriptures. Just to give you an idea. 1 John 4, 9 through 10. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Hereby is love, not that we love God, that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation propitiation for our sins. He took our place. He took our place because Jesus Christ took our place and we become justified in Him. His robe of righteousness is put on us. His blood washes us clean or we can stand before God. We are spared the wrath of God that is reserved for sinners and the unjust. 1 John 2, 2 tells us He took our place. 1 John 2, 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. What love. And, and then Isaiah 53, 6 and 10 through 12 talks about him becoming sin, the iniquity um, for the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. That's in Isaiah. It talks about that. John 3.36. So let's tell me to do that one. John 3.36. So when you say we're not appointed unto wrath, you need to understand it's because of what Jesus Christ has done. He's took the place. Wrath deserves, you know, sin Sin, the, the sin of people, sin, God's wrath is poured out on those of the ungodly and of the sin, who's in sin. Galatians 3, uh, John three thirty six. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not 
the sun shall not see light, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The sinner, those in sin. The wrath of God abides on those in sin, not on the Christians. The true ones that accepted Jesus Christ into their heart and are living the way you're supposed to live. Um, Romans 5, 8 through 9. You want me to read that, Lord? Okay. Romans 8, 5 through 9. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If ye be that the Spirit of God dwell, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit life is life because of righteousness. Wow. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he hath raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit His spirit that dwelleth in you. So we have his righteousness. Um, Isaiah 61, 10 talks about the robe of righteousness and the garment of salvation. When you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, the blood of Jesus does so much. All right, 1 Peter 2, 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Now, I'm going to read it like I've got it down here. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly, the justified, the redeemed, the saved, out of temptations and reserve the unjust, not justified by Christ's blood, those in sin, unto the day of judgment to be punished. They are reserved and reserves the unjust. The justified are only those saved in the blood of Jesus Christ. Those who accepted him and can say without deception, Jesus Christ is my Lord. And then we have Revelation 3.10. Now this is the beginning of Revelation. This is before the seals are opened. This is talking about the, the seven churches that are mentioned. Ephesus, um, Pergamos. Thyatira, Sardis, Laodicea, all those are talking about the churches that's going to be in play, going to be evident at the end times. But the churches, because he's because at the end of them they're talking about the churches, not just church. After each one he's talking about the churches here. So he's talking about those churches, anybody that is part of Jesus Christ's true church, any part of the church, can, claims to be part of the church the churches of the world that represent him you know supposed to be church of God church of whoever Latter day Saints whoever that professed Jesus Christ is the son of God they believe in basic Christianity a lot of them twist it you know what I'm trying to say those will be found during the end time so you have the lukewarm they will spew out, which is your, your prosperity doctrines. You have the bright. That church is in there. You have all of them. But in Revelation 3.10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour, or time, hour, time, of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them which dwell upon the earth. What other hour of temptation that shall come upon the earth besides Noah's and the ark. Noah and the ark, excuse me. Trial and temptation. I also will keep thee from the hour. This is Jesus Christ speaking. I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them which dwell on the earth. Now this does not mean we're not being tried and tested and persecuted now. 
the bride of Christ, the true, true church, all the churches that even have Jesus or God's name on it, are being tried and tested, persecuted, because you can see as people get lifted up in pride and then the morals fall and they decline into all this debauchery and lewdness and sexual behavior and all this stuff, The churches decline to. They get persecuted. They don't want to hear about Jesus Christ. We will not be subjected to God's judgment when Christ has already satisfied God's judgment on the cross instead. We have already, through Jesus Christ, through his accepting the wrath, him taking sin, becoming sin, taking that punishment, spilling his blood for us, our judgment against wrath has already been paid. And it's, we know through Jesus Christ, we are saved. Through Jesus Christ from the wrath. It even says that in Romans, where was it? Romans 5, 8 through 9. In Romans 5, 8 through 9, it, it tells us we're saved from wrath because of Jesus Christ. 8. But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 9. Much more than being now justified, redeemed, our atonement paid, our our bill paid now being justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him i ask you to take this and you study this out please be ready to give somebody an answer because again i've heard i've heard so many people say we're not pointing to wrath we're not pointing to wrath we're not pointing to wrath but when you question them they don't know what that means it means through what Jesus Christ did. When you accept him as a child of God, he took your place. He took that judgment of wrath. So you are free and you are spared. But take that and try it. Test it in Jesus Christ's name. Yes, in addition, you are spared the judgment of hell. You are redeemed. If you stay close to him and don't live a backslidden life. Because we see even in these churches... There was five out of seven. Jesus called for at least one person in there to repent. That's his own church, his own body. You got to repent. There comes a point when you don't have to fall. Doesn't mean you don't trip. But Jude 124 says, And him that is able to keep you from falling. But if you do fall, in Proverbs it talks about a just man falls seven times and gets back up. If you fall, get back up. Shake off the dust. Straighten up your crown. And that's not a crown of pride. That's where God says we're kings and priests. Straighten your crown. Remember, you're a child of the Most High God. Your heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ from the kingdom of God. You're not who this world says you are. You're who Jesus Christ says you are. And redeemed you and made you to be. It does not matter what the world thinks about you. Know to who you belong. Jesus Christ. And he thinks you're to die for. So that's what he did. He died for you. We do not have to live up to man's expectations. We live up to God's expectations, which means He will help us every step of the way. He sent us the Comforter, the sweet Holy Spirit, dear, dear friend. He sent us Jesus Christ, the Word, Jesus Christ, the name, Jesus Christ, the blood, Jesus Christ, God and man. Jesus Christ, who's in, you know, uncombatable, who is indestructible, unstoppable all-powerful over the enemy. He's 
powerful. He's over all the enemy. He's over the angels. That means the fallen angels too. 1 Peter 3, 22. And then some people say, why do you pray sometimes and ask the Lord to send out angels? 1 Peter 3, 22. When the Lord moves upon me, because I ask the Holy Spirit to lead my prayer, sometimes I do. Jesus Christ, send out angels. Please send out angels, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name. Why? 1 Peter 3, 22. A lot of people bug me on that. They say, oh, only God has power over the angels. You need to study the word out. Somebody told me that. I said, okay, God, you keep telling me this. Where's it at? I'm in 2 Peter. Give me a moment. 1 Peter 3, 22. Talking about Jesus Christ, you can find that in the beginning of the chapter. Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Everything's subject unto him. The only thing that is greater than him is Father God. And he's connected to Father God some way because it's I and my Father are one. But we know Father God is the greatest. Please pray about this. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. There is so much. So much. And I, I do, I have a little note here. I want to thank everybody who has sent cards, letters, prayers, donations, confirmations. I appreciate it. Even little gifts. I appreciate it. Um, we appreciate it. And I'm just praying and ask the Lord how, where, what, sin, do what, where, however. His will be done. His will be done in all things. It's you gotta live that way. You gotta live that way. His will be done. And say, if the Lord be willing, if the Lord will. That's what James tells us to say. If the Lord will. We're not promised tomorrow. If you make plans, my doctors when I when I used to go to doctors, I don't go anymore. When I was being tried and tested my health, turned out to be weapons being shot at me. Didn't know about it then, do now. But they would want to set a re returning appointment. I said, well, if, if the Lord, Lord willing, if I can, can you or can you not? Lord willing, if I can, I will try to be here. I would not, I'm not committing to something if I don't think I can do it. I want to be faithful to what I'm saying. I say, Lord willing, as we're told to do. All right. I'm here and wrap this up. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and now's the time. I I will say this probably even when we all get to heaven. Jesus Christ is a love like no other. And we're about to find out just really what his love is. I, I want to stay on that end. I don't ever want to be on his wrath. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, he fled the world, the world by one command. Uh, no. And they're going to melt the, the world with heat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. For those of you that Jesus Christ, Father God, has been dealing with you, it's time. Sometimes it's just like a beating through this. Sometimes it's a constant running through your mind. Sometimes it's a feeling, a, a heaviness, or you just can't get, you, he's dealing with you with conviction. Those of you that have sinned and turned and walked away, it's time to come home. It takes one step, turn around, and he's right there waiting. It's that simple. If you don't know how to say a prayer, you can say this prayer with me. It's by grace in through faith that you're saved you make the profession of faith the declarations in faith and you will be saved he will come into your heart and wash you clean so please say this prayer with me jesus christ please come into my heart and wash me clean wash me of all my sins forgive me change my heart from stony to flesh as Ezekiel says you will do. I believe you are the Son of God who came to this earth by virgin birth. I believe you came as both flesh and God and that you gave your life on Calvary, 
but she rose again three days later victorious. I confess you are the Son of God. I confess and I believe you are my Lord and I accept you into my heart here and now. In Jesus Christ's name, and I ask your Holy Spirit to come in too and baptize me. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's that simple. Now, I recommend you get you a hard copy Bible. This one's been with me for many years. This is a KJV, but you pray and you seek. Ask Jesus Christ or Holy Spirit. Which Bible, Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ in your name? Which Bible do I need? Which translation? And then let him lead you to it. And he has his way of getting through to you. I recommend you get baptized in water. Symbolic of putting away the old, old man and rising up with the new. Some people, when, when, when they get baptized, come up out of the water, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that is awesome to see. All of you still going to churches, please pray about familiar spirits. A lot of times, you're so used to being around the false, you think it's surreal. I've been through that myself. So try it, test it, test everything. In Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Those of you who are my enemy, I forgive you. I love you in Jesus Christ. I don't wish ill on you, but I do say, Lord, vengeance is not mine. Thus saith the Lord, I will recommend you take care of it, Daddy God. Unless he just leads me to pray a certain way at times. He knew worse than I ever could. And I, I'd rather see him saved if, they, if they're savable. I do. I'd rather see him up in heaven with us. <laughs> just... I do. Don't want nobody to go to hell. That's the way we have to be. You got to look past that enemy into who is inside them. Or who is directing them. Lucifer. Satan. The kingdom of darkness. It's not them. It's the demons inside them. And it can help you focus again. And to forgive them when you realize they are just having their buttons pushed or their strings pulled. To attack you. That's, you know. And then you do have the ones like the human agents. They can be government agents. They can be just human agents. Witches, warlock. You know, they have all that garbage too. Jesus Christ's name is all powerful. Don't let none of that sway you or, ooh, because it's, it's Jesus Christ undefeated, done defeated them all. He made a show of the enemies. Colossians 2.15, I believe it is. So when you understand that, you realize that everything, all the enemy, all links back to one, no matter, and even all the evil people in this world, they all go back to one, the kingdom of darkness. You have really one enemy we're fighting. So if we quit focusing on the gazillion people that seem to be attacking us and realize it is one assault from one kingdom, that's already defeated because Jesus Christ has all power, you'll start having more victories. It's all through Jesus Christ, though. Second, um, excuse me, Colossians 2.15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. It was not hard. Made a public display of it. God bless them. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ always and remember who you are in Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.